This completes the first presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Business Law and Social Sciences. I now invite the Vice-Chancellor to introduce the recipient of the honorary award of the Doctor of the University. We are this morning delighted to be conferring the award of Doctor of the University upon Fleur Sexton, and I now call upon the University Orator to give the citation. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduands. Today we confer the degree of Honorary Doctor of Birmingham City University honoris causa on Fleur Sexton. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the fascinations of days like today is to see firsthand how some academic subjects are more inclined to attract one group of people than another, and this goes further back. Look at gender ratios, for example, at A-level business studies taken by three boys for every one girl. It's four to one for politics. At university, that gap closes a little, but it's still there. And then look what happens. Only 5.5% of UK women run their own business, compared to 9% in Australia, 11% in the USA, and 15% in Canada. Now, if you park for a moment every other consideration of equality, the economic loss is huge. One million businesses that might have been 400 billion pounds of lost value to the wider economy. And that means that it's worth taking every opportunity we can to celebrate women who, defying those odds, become award-winning entrepreneurs and leaders in the wider business community. Women, that is, like Fleur Sexton. Warwickshire-born, Fleur studied French at the University of Nottingham before completing a PGCE at Oxford. Education was her passion, but not as you find it in the conventional landscape of providers. Our established hierarchies of primary, secondary, further and higher education do a great job in transforming the lives of millions, but they're not designed or funded to cater for every single need. So in the mid-1990s, Fleur Sexton did what brilliant business minds do, saw a gap in the market, but she also saw what every humanitarian does and saw the devastating impact of social inequality. The result was her company, PetXI, which has come to be recognized as one of the leading training providers in the country. The company works with schools, with local authorities, with local enterprise partnerships and employers. Whether it's children who need help with literacy, or adults who need help training for employment, or companies who need help meeting skills gaps, PetXI is there to provide it. Since 1996, there have been more than 250,000 graduates of PetXI programs and interventions. That means 250,000 people from a wide range of communities across the UK, 250,000 people for whom social mobility and improved life chances have become a reality, 250,000 people whom the country's conventional educational landscape found it too hard to reach. The PetXI Foundation, begun in 2014, has become a further engine of change, distributing money to schools, charities, and individuals in need. Now, Fleur Sexton's pioneering work has brought recognition on many fronts. Named Businesswoman of the Year in 2017, she serves as one of the deputy lieutenants of the West Midlands and sits on numerous boards. Coventry and Warwickshire Champions, Coventry and Warwickshire Chamber of Commerce, Coventry and Warwickshire Employment and Skills Board, and the historic Coventry Trust. She's also chair of the Coventry Music Trust, and her expertise is valued highly here in Birmingham, where she contributes expertise on employability skills to our own business school advisory board, lending the same perspectives to the Commonwealth Games Legacy and Benefits Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, Fleur Sexton's career is an inspiration to all students today, not just for the story it tells, 
of a determined woman seizing a business opportunity. But it shows, too, how much good it is possible to do in the world if you put your mind to it, to have an eye not just for personal success, but for the betterment of those around you. And although BCU and PetXI sit in different corners of the education sector, we share an ironclad conviction that when it comes to what these days is called leveling up, there is nothing more important than education. So Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduands, it gives me great pleasure to invite the Vice-Chancellor to confer the degree of Honorary Doctor of Birmingham City University Honoris Causa on Fleur Sexton. As Vice-Chancellor, I exercise the authority of the University's Academic Board, and I confer the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa on Fleur Sexton, and I invite you, Pro-Chancellor, to present the commemorative medal. That completes the conferment of the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa, and I'm delighted now to invite Fleur to address the congregation. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and otherly gendered guests. I am deeply honoured to humbly accept this honorary award of Doctor of the University, especially meaningful from BCU, a university whose values are firmly rooted in community and diverse and forward thinking. It is immensely generous of you to honour me in this way, and I really am absolutely thrilled, so thank you. Thank you also, I'd like to say, for the support I've had over the years to my mum and my dad, to my husband, my children, my family, my colleagues, and all of the young people and adult learners that I work with at PetXI. All of us here today, we share so much in terms of shared commitment, dedication, and resilience. All of you who have achieved your degrees, congratulations, it's absolutely wonderful. You have shown all of those qualities in achieving your degree. And these are also the key qualities which are needed when you fulfill your purpose in the world. The key is always, always purpose. How do we know what it is? How do we find it? As you leave here today, graduates of Birmingham City University, congratulations again, it sounds marvellous, well done. Uh, as you leave, you will start to take up places in big companies, in small companies, maybe you'll start your own businesses, maybe you'll go into government, maybe you'll, you'll go into all sorts of different places, or different areas of work. Some of you will go into academia, some of you will start your own business in, in a variety of different portfolio stances, which is, is really great, you've got so many options. There are so many routes to achieving our purpose, but don't worry about finding it. Just get out in the world and focus on serving people, serving your community, serving colleagues, and your purpose will find you. You'll find, as you work, that certain things will make you feel alive. Certain things will spark passion. For example, to drive change. You'll start doing things that you think, there's better ways of doing this. There's ways I could really improve this. Do it. Take those opportunities. This is your purpose, finding you. Be open to it. 28 years ago, I was just starting work as a teacher, and my purpose was just becoming obvious to me. It was and still is to help people to fulfill their potential and to break the barriers which are in their way, which stop them doing that. This led me to challenge inequalities and to drive for change in social fairness and social equity. That's what took me into business from being a teacher when I set up, along with my husband, my own business, which I still run 27 years later, PetXI. 
And that has been a great way for me to actually challenge and change inequalities. So business is all about life. Business is all about making those changes that you want to see. I still go out to teach every week in the classroom because that is why I went into it in the first place and never forget what your purpose is and why you actually want to get up every morning, make those changes. So always remember why you went into it in the first place because that will really sustain you when things are difficult. So your purpose will find you. Just be you in the world and be glorious, wonderful you every single day, whatever and whoever that authentically is. Never fall for the idea that success is about money or status, because it isn't. It never has been and it never will be. Success is measured by what you give to others, how you help others to rise. The more we all achieve, the greater the obligation on us to pay it forward. There will be tough times, absolutely. So don't let people don't let people tell you that there isn't, because when there are tough times, that's when we're really called on to, to really bring out the best in, in what's in us. When I read my bio or, or any bio, you know, you, you hear about all the highlights of a career, and it isn't a continuous positive trajectory. And I've often wanted to write an alternative one that actually shows the lowest points, you know, the, the points when the, the times are really tough, opportunities are scarce and hope is quite low because these are the moments that define us it's not the good times that make us who we are but it's how we rise when we fall that's what makes us i'm so proud of each and every one of you here today as you start on your amazing journeys and you're at the start of it which is an incredible place to be so be bold be brave be grateful for every opportunity that God sends your way and above all, be there for other people. You will live out your purpose in a big way or in a small way. It doesn't actually matter. You can change the world more by, by really connecting and helping one person sometimes than if you reach out to hundreds. You will make the world kinder, you will make the world, world braver and fairer and more beautiful as a result. So go out there and be you. Thank you.